For the next 50 hours, I am stranded on this deserted island in the middle of the ocean. During that, I use what the vast sea provides to turn my small island into an extraordinary build, complete with farms, animals, and stacks of materials, making me the richest castaway in history. So strap in as I set out on my journey at sea for the next 50 hours. Okay, I am back on an island, stuck in the middle of the ocean with... Nothing, nowhere. I don't know why I did this to myself again. I'm stranded on an island all alone. Well, you guys are gonna be my only friends I make. So you're gonna be Bill, uh, you're Timmy, you're Jim, and you're Wallop. After introducing myself to the locals, I got to the regular Minecraft stuff, like chopping down a tree with my bare hand. But why stop ruining the environment there? I also dug up some stone to upgrade my tools because who really uses the wooden stuff these days? Then I grabbed the only other possible resource on the island, seeds. Oh, that's a great start. One for one. Okay, one for three. That's one for four. And uh, this, is, this is proving to not go well. All right, three seeds on the entire island. That's... Lovely. I planted down what seemed to be my only food, quickly realizing I'm gonna starve to death if I wait here forever. So I hopped in the water in search of some fish. Somehow while swimming through the ocean, I was faster than sea life itself. While under the sea, I spotted a drowned building with a chest. When I went to go open it, it refused. So I tried breaking the dang thing and that's when chaos ensued. What just happened? Was there a shark? Then in there, I vowed to stay away from the water for the rest of eternity. I returned to land, dug up some more natural resources, and made myself a furnace, which I used to smelt some wood. Okay, it was to make charcoal. I'm not the idiot here. I used said charcoal to light up my island. No way am I letting skeletons, creepers, or zombies ruin my beach vacation. Speaking of ruining something, you should hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. That way you're not ruining my day. And you're helping me reach one bar billion subscri- oh, I can't get through it, it's too cringe. I'm sorry, back to the video. Okay, well the sky looks awesome. Once I realized there was nothing else I could do on the surface, I started mining again. I discovered a cave with so many creepers inside, but there's no way I'm not gonna try and take this on. Oh, I shouldn't have tried that. Now we can grab iron. After taking care of most of the mobs, I went to go grab as many ores as possible. I'm not gonna survive very long on an island without any armor, so I grabbed as much iron and coal as I could find. In the process, I ended up stumbling onto a diamond, and no, I'm not gonna mine it with my stone pickaxe. After I had everything I needed, I emerged from the cave to a special surprise. A chicken! That's actually so good! You're like, you're gonna be my only friend. The turtles have- oh wait, no, the- the- uh, what's your name? Uh... Whack-a-mole? I don't even remember. This is the one animal that will just multiply itself. It's like a cell. It'll just multiply on its own. So as soon as that thing lays an egg, we are good to go. If I just instantly make a hopper, I could just get infinite chicken eggs. And I think I can do that. I think I can get a hopper because I just, I just mine so much iron. So I should be able to just make a hopper right now. So I put the little feller into his cage with a hopper. So while I'm doing other stuff on the island, he can just constantly poop out his own eggs and then I can throw them at him later. However, don't think I forgot about that diamond. Once I had an iron pickaxe, I went back down to see if I could grab it. Although I was now prepared for how many mobs were down there. I thought it would be easy breezy beautiful cover girl, but as soon as I landed, it was like World War III happening all over again. So I dug myself into the wall and cowered away. But that's just not what I do. So as soon as I could, I mined out of the wall and booked it towards the diamond. I scooped the thing up as fast as I could and made a break for the water stream. Oh, the great escape. I actually did not think I was gonna survive that, but I did feel like Michael Phelps swimming up that water stream. On the surface, I put the diamond to great use, okay? I made the best tool of all time. A diamond shovel. Now, I didn't really have a plan when I made this shovel, but it turns out that I needed to clear out the island, so I got to work. I started flattening down our base of operations so I could imagine a build here. However, as I said before, the only resources I'm gonna get on this island are below me. So as soon as I made iron armor, I went back into the caves. I really just wanted to get as many resources as I possibly could. I would grab iron, lapis, gold, it didn't really matter. I wanted to make sure I wouldn't return home empty-handed. While I was down there, I also grabbed another three diamonds, which isn't great, but it's not terrible, okay? I can't complain. However, I did make a fatal mistake while down there. I only noticed that my pickaxe was losing durability when it was about to break, so I went to the very top of one of the ravines and tried to break out. However, as I suspected, 
I trapped myself down below without a pickaxe and had to mine stone for like an hour. Okay, it really wasn't an hour, otherwise we would have gone into hour two, but you understand the reference. I have never had to dig out of a caving venture with my fist, but as soon as I saw the water, it was heaven. On land, I made myself a pickaxe to make sure that that never happens again. Then I actually made a boat because I spotted a ruined portal outside of our island. I boated over to see what was there, and uh, the chest was kind of terrible. This was probably my only chance for a god apple, and it did not deliver. To end out the day, we had an amazing discovery. The chicken had laid three eggs, so I threw them at him, and I got a baby chicken! What an impeccable way to end out hour one. Hour two started, and I was getting hungry. Oh, I am... I'm sick of eating rotten flesh. Where is the ocean? Back to chopping up the sea life, I guess. On land, the farm was looking surprisingly good. Things were growing finely, and I could even expand the things making a proper farm. However, once again, my brain came up with only one thing to do. Mine. But this time, I'm not getting stuck. I'm already suffering PTSD from the last hour. I don't want to be boring, so let's give some highlights. I found a big cave with some clear diamonds inside. Ooh. Ooh, many diamonds. Then I spotted an area of the cave I had to explore. But of course, it led to nothing. Who generates these worlds anyway? You're not doing a very good job. I resend my last statement after finding this new cave with a few more diamonds. And third vein of diamonds. Fourth vein of diamonds. Fifth vein of diamonds. This place is crazy. Sixth vein of diamonds. Oh my word. This cave went from nothing to ow. And if it wasn't hard enough down here, my PTSD flashbacks arose when I relived World War III for the second time this video. Why are there so many mobs? What is this? What is all of this? What is any of this? Dude, I feel like I'm in a green bean commercial right now. My money's down, but my XP is up. Holy cow. Once the shooting stopped, I resurfaced to figure out that I had gotten a carrot. I then cleared out all the wheat and started bone mealing that singular carrot. Once I had an army of little orange triangles, I made some golden carrots. That's the best food source I'm going to find out on the island. With food situated, my next course of action was to head to the nether. If I can get enchants going, I'll have a much better time living here. Plus, my base of operations requires a nether-only block. So I quickly grabbed obsidian. Get it? Because it's a joke. Obsidian is slow. All right, now that the portal's up and running, I was able to enter Red Death, or what I've been calling the Nether. Turns out it would take me a solid 15 minutes to just find anything other than wall. Yeah, I, I don't know why, I just couldn't find the actual Nether. I was stuck tunneling forever. With all the blocks I had gathered up, I came to a brilliant conclusion. A giant bridge from our little tunnel all the way to the fortress I see in the distance. If I'm gonna live in this world for 50 hours, two days of my life, and the equivalent to watching Home Alone 27 times, I'm gonna be building a bridge to make this journey a little easier. I definitely wanted to camp out the blazes a little bit more when I got there, however, the near-death experience, uh, kind of made me terrified to stay there. So I went to find a piglin so I could trade with it for an enchanted book, aka grindstone that for an enchant table. However, after two trades, I kind of got bored and killed it for some reason. For hour three, I moved on to different piglins. I guess the first one just didn't sit well with me. I'm still looking for an enchanted book. Hopefully one that I can just grindstone and not use. But of course, I had the worst luck. Oh, a book! I had to be the best possible one. Thank you for that. That's cool. Now I get to erase soul speed three for my life, but all right. Even if it was soul speed three, I'm still able to grindstone this and make it into an enchantment table, a super valuable item I wouldn't normally be able to get. However, turning into a level 30, that's gonna be a challenge. In the meantime, I was able to upgrade my tools and armor with basic enchants. Let's go, we're fully enchanted. It means basically nothing because it's all prompt one, but. After that little achievement, I had a plan for the next hour. Yes, the full hour. I made myself a fishing rod and got to work on a simple dock. The build was nothing special, but right out the gate, it's an okay dock. Plus, I'm really starting to love the waterlogged design. I used it in a previous video, and it just looks so much cooler than I expected. But yes, you guessed it, I'm gonna be fishing. Fishing for the entire hour, just to see what we get, and if it's worth it for the future hours on the island. Along the way, I was able to upgrade my rod so that I was getting much better items. And by the hour's end, I was able to fish up an entire barrel of items, which included over a stack of fish, a couple enchanted rods, Nemo himself, and enchanted books that I'll be making great use of later. Including one that has Fortune 2 on it. That's a crazy book. 
The next two hours are spent preparing for our house build. Now, if you know me, you know that I like to go way overboard with my starter home, and I did not disappoint this video. As I said, this is to prepare. First, I made a diamond hoe and got efficiency on it. The reason I need it is still a secret for now. You'll know later, trust me. In the meantime, it was back down to the caves. The nether can be scary, which means I need armor, so I strip mine for a little bit to get some extra diamonds. It worked for a while, but who just likes strip mining? Thankfully, I did end up running into a cave with a surprising amount of diamonds. When I finally wanted to escape, I found myself in an underwater cave with the worst sort of luck a human in history could experience. What? You've gotta be kidding me. I run into a guardian temple? Ah, crap. But I was able to swim out of there and find my way back home. What the? Huh? So I guess I'm not alone out here? My island may not be the only one. That's good news, especially if I can find sugarcane out here. For now, I was still in the middle of the ocean looking for my base. <gasps> my home! I found my home! Oh, that was only forever. By the next hour, I realized both my pickaxes were a mess. So I made a new one and put them all together for an efficiency 2, fortune 2 on breaking one pick. With that sorted out, it was time to head back to the nether. I made my way all the way over to the crimson forest across the lava. Reason? I need the crimson fungus thing. Honestly, I don't remember the name of the leaves of the trees, but that's what I'm using for my house. And yes, that is why I made the hoe earlier with efficiency, because otherwise I'd be sitting here punching these for the next 40 hours. After gathering a lot of the red, the new name for this block, I moved on to quartz. However, I wasn't doing this for levels or anything. This was the other block I'm using for my house. If you can guess what I'm about to build, comment it down below and see if you're right. After gathering stacks of materials, probably all that I'll ever be needing, which is definitely a lie based on how big my house is going to be, I headed back to the island. There, I made some more diamond armor, which I enchanted with basic enchants as well. And I was also able to make a sword and axe to round out my diamond tool set. Plus, I'm going to be needing these for the build I'm about to embark on. And to end out hour five, I finally checked back in on our chicken friend. Him and his brethren are producing a lot of eggs, so I decided to put a chest underneath the hopper. I also don't remember how the the chicken does for the rest of the video, I might not check on him at all. I hope he's doing good. It's like two weeks after recording. Is he still alive on my island? I hope so. All right, hours six through 10 are gonna get crazy. A lot of building happens in a decently short period of time. Plus, smelting smooth quartz takes a while. But I start off by terraforming the island. I need an open area to work with for the rest of the 50 hours. And trust me, this was no easy task. D can you imagine trying to like make sand flow? I had to use dirt. I didn't have any sandstone. It was, it was really annoying. However, after having an area set up, I started work on placing the nether wart block, which is apparently the name. I made a large circle and built it up layer by layer. I don't know how tall lighthouses are supposed to be. I also don't know if that's really classified as a house. Moving on, once the red was done, I moved on to stacking up some quartz. This wasn't an easy task. I'm like at least four blocks above the ground at this point. Eventually, I figured out how annoying quartz was because of this series. Two issues with it. It's hard to get even with the fortune two pickaxe and the smelting cost for the smooth quartz is crazy. That's when I went back in the nether to try and grind some blazes for fuel. I thought since it smelted 20 items, they would make more sense than coal. At the rate I was getting them without looting, not even close. So I did go on my own journey back in the overworld for some coal. I ended up with like a stack and a half or something. When I was back, I continued smelting up more quartz while building up the next layer of the nether warp block. At this point, I'm getting really high up there and, um, may have missed a clutch or two. And that main issue with quartz I mentioned earlier, uh, I ran out of it. So mining spree again. After I had enough, I made the dumbest mistake of the entire video. And I'm only an hour six, so like the rest of this video isn't even that bad. Please tell me I'm super dumb down in the comments below. Did I actually just throw my pickaxe with fortune on it into the fire? I was planning to throw my flint and steel in there and make a slot for all the ender pearls I might get. Gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that lovely mistake ended hour six. Hour seven was pretty boring. Smelting six more stacks of quartz bores me, so instead I fished. I enjoy hanging out on the dock, just staring into the open ocean. My fishing haul was, well, a ton of fish, as expected, but most importantly, I got a protection three book and some enchanted bows. I bet who really cares about those. You guys may think it's dumb to like fish for an entire hour, but I would recommend you try it. Not only will you get killer loot half the time or one, well, 1% 1 of the time you'll get killer loot, 
but you actually kind of enjoy the game again. The next hour is a big day, lighthouse wise. I stacked up another quartz layer, making the fourth layer of the build. Not knowing how tall it's meant to be, I took a break from stacking and grabbed some stone. And by grab some stone, I mean a lot of stone. Five stacks to be precise. What was I gonna use it for? Well, the top of the lighthouse. No, not the roof of it, but like the top floor where the light is gonna be, I guess, to make it accurate. I, I don't really know how a lighthouse is supposed to look. I'm doing this off of memory. Anyway, after building the entire thing, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's flat up there now, which is a good sign. And I still have no idea how to build a roof. Finally, on to the end of building this thing. Hey, I told you to strap in. We're on hour nine here and I'm still building it. It's no longer a starter base, okay? The roof of this place was a mess to build, though, let me tell you. I used strip logs and quartz to build the light room and then outline the roof with the red. After getting one of the four quadrants done, I followed the pattern all the way around the circular structure and I have to say, I kind of rounded it out to look like a mushroom. That's not what I intended. Instead of keeping it looking like a mushroom, I decided to go back into the nether for more quartz so I could put a topper on it. Huh? This is not quartz, but I'll take it. Why did I have to go back to the nether instead of using the six stacks of quartz I already had? Uh, well, you know, I ran out. But once I was back, I made the little topper thing out of quartz stairs and just blocks, and now it has a cute little pointy thing. When you step back and look at it, this thing really looks like a lighthouse, and I'm so proud of this, because I didn't look at a picture or anything, I just built it. Only took me four hours of work to, to build the exterior, and I haven't even gotten on the inside yet, lovely. After nine hours of building my island up, I wanted to go back into the mines and take a little bit of a breather break. So for about 20 minutes, I was strip mining, and it, it was so fun. But with all that time strip mining, it led me into a gigantic cave. Yet again, I got stuck in the middle of World War III and we're swarmed by a ton of mobs. Oh my word. Dude, this cave is insane. Oh, oh dude, I want to like start a hardcore world in just this cave. While exploring this gigantic cave, I ended up in a mine shaft with a skeleton spawner right at the entrance. That's when I got one of the most insane finds of the entire video. My luck went from negative to less than negative, which is probably still negative actually. Oh, a mending book. Book? Okay, that's actually sick. That is like the only way I'm gonna get a, a mending book is finding it in a freaking mine shaft, dude. That's insane. With that kind of a find, I just wanted to head home. Like I was so excited to finally get a mending book after 10 hours of playing in this world. I have no access to villagers here. So this was the most crucial thing I could get. While on my sunrise swim home, I ended up finding a mushroom island. This time, I decided to not ignore the thing and go to it. I spent my time on this land, like the only place with actual land, killing about 30 or so mushrooms. Did these guys do anything to harm me? No. Was it absolutely fun? Yeah. Once I got to the edge of the island, I found some sugar cane, which, trust me, I was thinking about not taking because I wanted to stick to the island thing, but technically I'm on an island, so I grabbed the sugar cane and booked it back home. All in all, the total from mining was like 33 diamonds, a stack and a half of gold, a bunch of other things that are not important, but the mending book is. With such a haul, hour 10 wasn't actually wasted this time. Hour 11, we were back at base, but still without a base, if you can believe that. I haven't done the interior of the lighthouse yet, and I really needed to. So after I planted down the sugar cane, I went back down to the mines to grab cobble. Okay, no, I'm not actually mining. I'm just grabbing cobble. Trust me, I, I would wouldn't have done this if I didn't have to. I got almost three rows of cobblestone from being down here and no one needs that much, so I left. Then I came up with one of my greatest plans of all time, go to the nether for lava. Yes, I grabbed buckets of lava from the nether to start smelting stuff, because there's no way I'm getting enough coal to smelt all of this cobblestone. While the lava was doing its job outside the lighthouse, I was inside, starting to build this staircase. I used wood slabs to go up the lighthouse spirally so I could get to the top. It's funny, because I'm building this thing like all the way up to the top, and I never once used it, and I never once went to the top of the lighthouse again. But hey, there's a giant light up here, so it technically is functioning. Once the staircase was in place, I started decorating it with wood beams, stone brick, and pretty much anything I could do to support the staircase. I want the first floor to actually be my base of operations, and I want it to look nice. So once I had everything set in place, I started work on the kitchen by adding barrels, furnaces, blast furnaces, smokers, pretty much anything I could think of in here. And with that looking not half too bad, I went to work on the other section, which ended up ruining 
summoning the end of my hour. Unfortunately, I was only able to place a floating enchant table. Uh, that was it. I, I didn't get to work on the chest room yet, but I will in the next hour, I swear. All right, hour 12 was great. I finished up the chest area and then added some item frames to make it look a little bit better. Then I sorted all of my items. Yes, everything I had just collected for the however many hours, I don't even know which one we're in. Did I just say 12? Anyway, I threw all of them into the chest area, making a nether chest, a fish chest, ores, important items, plants, mob drops, and then a spare armor slash tool chest. Then I realized that I actually didn't make the light at the top of the lighthouse. I've, I've kind of been misleading you guys. So I went back to the nether to try and find some of those nether fungus light up thingies. Shroom lights. Never mind. It's written in my script. I should have read it. <laughs> I'm stupid. Anyway, I, I went there to the nether for that. On the way, I almost got it into lava from one of those hoglin thingies, and it was kind of scary. Yeah, you die for that, okay? Once I was out of the nether with my shroom lights, I began to make the actual light part of the lighthouse. And if you back up, you can literally see it. This thing looks so cool. I would really like if a boat came by and picked me up so I could go home, but I guess I am making this my home from now on. A little later, I went back into the nether to grab some more lava buckets, you know, for my smelting needs. However, when I got back, uh, I was not at my base. To fix this issue, I went and took all of the cords of my base, went back into the nether, and put the portal where it needed to be. However, after I broke the portal, I realized I had forgotten a flint and steel, which means I'm now stuck in the nether for the rest of the 50 hours. Don't worry, I actually do have a plan. It would be cool if I could get, you know, a ghast or a blaze over here, but let's be realistic. No matter what, since the 1.16 nether update, you have always been able to leave here, even if you have nothing. So so I went out, grabbed some gold from around the nether, turned that into some gold nuggets, and began trading with piglins for a fire charge. With it, I returned to the portal and was able to go home. I'm so glad I was not stuck in there for the rest of the 50 hours. Hour 13, I came up with a plan to start expanding my island. However, I don't really have the resources to do that, like dirt is pretty minimal out here in the middle of uh, no man's land. So after clearing out a space on the island, I went back into the nether to look for some gravel. Yes, I could probably grab it from the ocean, but I don't have aqua affinity or respiration or a good shovel even to make it an easier process. So instead, I circled the nether for a very long time trying to look for a soul sand biome. Once I did find what I was looking for, I just started to mine as much gravel as I possibly could. I don't know how much I'm going to be needing, but it's probably more than what I can get. With the gravel, I returned home and started turning it all into coarse dirt with the dirt I had left. Yep, I'm gonna continue duping dirt. I would place down coarse dirt, hoe it back into regular dirt, pick it up, and repeat the process over and over again. While doing this, I was interrupted by a trident guy. Thankfully, it was really easy, and I took absolutely no damage the entire fight. But this drop was insane. Oh, I actually got a trident. I literally, I can't heal it up though. I can't. I can't get mending. I have one mending book, and I there's no way I'm using my mending book on a trident. And yeah, there's no way I'm using my mending book on a freaking trident. I've never even used it in my life, but I will end up displaying it at one point. The next hour, I spent building a dock, much better than the original one that I started with, okay? I need an actual fishing dock so that I can survive on this island. Not that fishing has kept me alive in any way, but if you're stuck on an island, you have to be fishing. I started by making the dock right in front of the lighthouse. I wanted one of the pathways leading directly to the ocean and the other across the island, I guess. What I'm trying to say is there are perpendicular to each other. I used oak wood for the design because that's pretty much the only wood I have at this point. Once the core of the build was done, I started adding decoration like fence posts on the dock, stone brick walls with lanterns on them to decorate it, a bunch of lamp posts, trap doors. It really didn't matter. I was trying to make this thing look as good as possible. To be fair, it's been a while since I've seen myself use campfires as decoration. So I was really pushing my building limits with this thing. And once the build was complete, I moved back inside side to the lighthouse. I still don't have enough bookshelves for my hanging enchant table. To solve that issue, I used the leather that I had gotten from all of those mushrooms and the sugarcane I have been growing to make some of the bookcases I needed. However, I quickly realized that I still don't have enough for level 30. So to fix that issue, I went back into the nether to trade with piglins. Now, obviously this isn't going to get me books. I mean, it technically can. I did grindstone one earlier for the enchant table, but that's not the goal. I need leather. I've got the sugarcane. I just need the leather for the rest of the bookcases. So after I found my piglin, I just sat
sat there, dude. I honestly, this is probably the most boring part about Minecraft, so I'm just gonna skip over it, other than the loot that I got. I obviously got a few Soul Speed books, a couple Fire Res pots, 16 Ender Pearls, which is amazing, by the way, and then some other random stuff, but the best part was 59 leather. That's enough for me to not have to come back here. So with all of it, I went back home and started making all of the bookshelves I needed. Now making a hanging enchant table, a level 30 enchant table, uh, proved to be an issue with the design I did. I was basically just putting random bookcases wherever I could to see if I could eventually get it to level 30. And once I did, I was so relieved. I did a couple enchants on my sword, my axe, and then my pickaxe. Some of them being eh. Thankfully though, on my pickaxe, I was able to get efficiency four, unbreaking three, and fortune two. Now it's kind of perfect, but it's enough for me to be happy about. I also did use that mini book on this pickaxe because who knows if it's gonna break or not or when I'll have another chance to get a fortune pick. All right, the next hour you will not believe. I was back in the nether. For some reason, these 50 hours, I, I, I think I spend half of it in the nether. No, I really don't, okay? This is just so I can get my armor enchanted, okay? I started by mining a ton of quartz all over the place. I was looking in every biome to get as much of the quartz as I could. However, since that is extremely boring, I'm gonna skip over it. On my way back home, I did grind a few more blazes to see if it was worth trying to get some rods, but let's be honest, I've never had success here anyway. Once I did have enough levels, however, I went back to base and started enchanting all of my diamond gear. I started with the leggings, getting unbreaking three and prot three, which is awesome, and then I got the same thing on my helmet. However, my diamond chest plate proved to be a little bit troublesome. I did get protection four, but since I don't have unbreaking, there's zero point to wearing this right now. So I re-enchanted another one, got fire protection, but I did get unbreaking. So I combined the two and now I have three fourths of an OP set of armor. I wasn't able to do my boots in any manner whatsoever, but I did keep on my prot two feather falling three ones for the time being. Hour 16, I got back to work on making my island amazing. Clearly, I've already done that with a gigantic lighthouse, but what's a lighthouse without a real house next door? Plus, I'm kind of getting sick of the chickens being in a three by three hole. So I decided to make them their very own house. I started this new build by adding a stone brick foundation. Then I figured I should use stripped oak logs and quartz pillars to make the house. This place was super small because it's not going to be used for literally anything. So the roof didn't matter, pretty much nothing on the outside mattered. This patio, not a thing. The real thing that mattered was on the left side where I made a bigger chicken coop for all of the little guys that I have neglected completely. Once I got them all into their new home, I I also used a ton of their eggs and just started spamming them into a wall watching all the chickens fall. This was 100% unnecessary but super fun at the time. To finish out the build, I made a path from my house to it, as well as did some of the decoration on the outside, including adding leaves and bushes around the outside of the property and having to make my own tree because I tried to spawn one in and every single time it did not look right. For an hour's work, this place doesn't look too bad. And considering I did this entire thing for a chicken or a hundred chickens, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it was time wasted. The next hour, I once again spent fishing. Yeah, the entire hour fishing again. Now, I do this quite a lot throughout the series, and you're probably thinking, why are you fishing like once every five hours? That's so weird. I would completely agree with you if there isn't a chance that I could be getting a mending book out of the ocean. At this current point in time, I doubt I'm gonna be able to get villagers on my island, and there's also no way for me to get mending without them. Which means if I'm gonna live here for 50 hours, I'm probably gonna have to make multiple sets of armor because Otherwise, it's just gonna keep breaking, which means me sitting here relaxing by the ocean is a perfect excuse for time management. However, for those of you who do comment that you don't like fishing and it's a waste of time, uh, you were completely right because I did not get a mending book, so <laughs> that does not mean I'm giving up on my dream. Hour 18 was my attempt at not wasting time. For this hour, I built a really cool tree farm and it fits the island amazingly. However, before I did that, I tortured the chickens a little bit. And by torture, I mean I just kind of finely harvested them, okay? They were due for a killing. And it's fine, all of their chicken breasts went to great use, I probably ate them at some point. Okay, this looks bad. To begin the tree farm, I made a stone platform out into the ocean. Obviously, I'm gonna need more room if this is going to be an effective farm. And after I had the basis for it, I started filling in pathways with lines of dirt. If you don't know this about oak trees, they can actually grow one right next to each other, which means it's a complete space saver. However, to make the build fit into the island and not look like this, I went around and decorated the platform with fences, trapdoors, and oak logs. I wanted to fence it in from the actual ocean, but there's no 
way I'm just going to use one singular fence. Who am I? Okay, I have a decoration prowess to me. All right, so I made a really awesome tree farm. That's just what I do. However, once the new section of the island was built, there wasn't a cool way to get to it. So I added a stone path from our current dock all the way to this new one. I also decided to keep the sand of the beach. Even though there's not much here, I still want this to be somewhat of a beach section. Then I use birch trees for decoration. Yeah, you heard me right. I decided to use one of the worst trees in all of existence for decoration. The only reason for this is so I can separate this area of the island from the backside because I'm going to have a wraparound path and it's just not going to be through this area. I also bone mealed the area just to make it look a little bit better. However, all in all, I was feeling really good about myself. The next hour starts off with a bit of a mistake. Dude, why do I suck at being a YouTuber? Oh my word, this is... I'm mining off camera, that's pretty much what's been going on. So I guess this is technically hour 19 and a half, but let me update you. At this point, I've only collected a couple stacks of iron, gold, and a few diamonds. That was all just from previously explored caves, and now I'm onto strip mining. It worked out pretty well, because I kept finding diamond vein after diamond vein. E diamonds, let's go. At least I'm recording this time. Woohoo. That's crazy. Oh, what the? Okay. Um, that was... Dude, what? Two... Hello? There's so many. What the heck? I now have 17. I just got 14, like, right next to each other. However, my luck did change, but not for the better. For the next full 20 minutes of strip mining, I pretty much found nothing. Which is fine, because I'm not really down here for anything specific. I'm just here to grab as many ores as I possibly can. Oh, finally. An 8 vein, even. That's good. That's really good. I'm now at 40? Alright, I don't have to worry about diamonds anymore. Oh, it worked! I randomly got diamonds. Let's go! Wait, no way is another 8-man. Oh, it was close. It was close. 52. Let's go. Easy peasy. <laughs> when the hour was over, I ended up getting like three stacks of iron, three stacks of gold, a ton of raw copper, a lot of redstone, which I'm probably never going to use, and the big haul of 52 diamonds. I organized it all into chests and then started smelting all the smeltable things, and I'll come back to it all later. So I've been pretty proud of the armor I've gotten so far, but if you remember, I haven't maxed it out yet, which means another full hour of nether mining. This seems like a wasted effort yet again, but I'm actually doing this for a reason. I want to go after the wither, which means not only getting looting by enchant chance and not by villagers, but also getting perfect enchants for all my gear. Let's not forget my boots are still only protection too. However, quartz mining isn't always the most fun thing in the world, so uh, let's just skip past it. I ended the mining trip with 56 experience levels and a ton of quartz that I don't really care about. However, those levels are about to be put to great use. I started off hour 21 by enchanting a few different items, my shovel, some boots, and a sword. I went through the process of getting them enchanted and then grindstoning them when I didn't really want the enchantment. In the end, I ended up making a sword with looting 3, fire aspect, sharpness 4, and unbreaking. The only thing I would ever want else on that is mending. I also got a shovel with efficiency 5 and unbreaking 3. That then I finished off my boots with Unbreaking 3, Depth Started 3, Protection 3, and Feather Falling 4. Which means it's time to go to the nether. However, I have a very inconsistent brain, so I stopped at the blaze spawner to see how many blaze rods I could get. Looting 3 helped a ton, because I left there in no time with 59 rods. I did contemplate spending an entire hour here, but that's just simply impossible. Or impossible for my brain to comprehend. So I made my way all the way over to a different nether fortress to start grinding those wither skulls. The first skull was actually quite easy to get, marking one of three complete. However, the blazes I have to deal with on this mission get really, really annoying. So I I drink a fire res pot and discover something I have never known in Minecraft. If you have fire resistance on and a blaze shoots at you, it'll do absolutely nothing. Not light you on fire and do zero damage. However, the mission was still Wither Skulls, so after I got my second one and my third, I headed home to start prepping for the fight. I made some brewing stands, collected some glowstone, and got to work on some strength potions. I don't actually need these, but it makes the Wither look weaker than it already is. Then, to end out the hour, I made an Unbreaking 3, Power 4, and Mending Bow. All that fishing did eventually pay off. The next hour, it was finally time to fight the Wither. I made sure to head underground so that the Wither wouldn't be blowing up my base. Once I actually made the thing, I placed it down and ran back into my strip mine. During the first phase of its attack, I used my bow to just keep it at bay. Unfortunately, it's not fast enough to beat me at backing up in my own strip mine, so as soon as it was time, I started whacking it with the sword and it was dead. Okay, wait, that was, well, as expected. Hardest task known to man, beating the... 
Well, actually, the hardest task known to man is dying to the wither. Once I returned to surface, I decided to smell all the gold that I have and make it into golden blocks. Then I made a level one beacon behind my lighthouse. Eventually, I'm sure I can make it into a full-fledged beacon, but for now, I don't really need it. However, after all of that, it was back to doing some chores. I cut down seven stacks of wooden logs from my tree farm, which doesn't sound like very many, but when you're on an island and your only source of wood is this right here, it's pretty good. While organizing my chests, I found a chicken in my base. You shouldn't name this chicken. Jared. Yo, what up, Jared the homie? How's it going, Jared? You are stuck for all eternity. I hope you know that. Oh, here's your baby, by the way. Oh, I hit him with it. How are all of you knockoff Jareds doing? For the rest of the hour, I went back to fishing. Yeah, I know some of you are probably getting bored of this by now, but I still like it. I still have hopes of one day finding a mending book like this one. Oh, it's just channeling and pain of anthropods. Dang it. Oh well, fishing's still fun. Hour 23 was me building onto the island even more. I wanted to make a barn for some odd reason. I don't know. It just feels like the right thing to do. Wait, why did I make a barn and not add the chickens to it? I just, what am I doing? All right, that's enough spoilers. Basically, I wanted to make a barn on the backside of the island for storing hay bales. I started out by extending our island once more, which I used stone for the bottom and then dirt for the top. However, I had to make more dirt to do this, which meant hoeing coarse dirt over and over again. Yeah, I know, fun. But after I had enough area, I started to get to work. I used oak to frame out the build's walls. It's not gonna be anything fancy, but it's still gonna look all right. Plus, this is still the only wood I have to use on the island. I also added a second story on the inside, but it was super simple, so not much detail. Then I used deep slate to outline the roof. After that, I came up with the brilliant idea of using warped wood as the actual roof. However, I didn't have any warped wood, which meant going back into the nether to try and find the blue biome. Once I did find it, I did a little bit of deforestation, which is totally fine, it's the nether anyway. Then finished up the project by adding a blue roof. I don't really know what my brain was thinking at this point, but I guess blue was on the mind. I decorated the outside with a little bit of a path connecting to our previous house, added a small farm, and then realized I basically have no hay bales whatsoever. Don't ask me why I built this, I don't know. Hour 24 was kind of a bore. I started off the day by making even more dirt. I really hope at some point I figure out a way to not just continually do this over and over again. I know I'm on an island, but still, this is really annoying. Then I wanted to make one of the more useful farms on the island, one that I don't actually have at the moment, a sugarcane farm. Yes, I did have one previously, but I kind of destroyed it. So I built an area out into the water and decorated it with oak wood again, shocker. Although I think it's really cool how I fence in these builds. I don't really know how I come up with these designs, but it looks interesting. Then once all of the sugarcane was planted down, I realized I didn't want it to be alone, so I made a potato and carrot farm. I extended the island yet again with more dirt that I don't have to spare, and then placed down carrots and potatoes in a way that they will grow faster. If you didn't know, crops in Minecraft grow faster when they're not next to the same one of itself. So a carrot next to a carrot grows slower than a carrot next to a potato. I don't know why this is a thing, but I decided to take full advantage of it and make a really weird farm. Hours 25 and 26 were spent doing my favorite activity of all, mining for netherite. Yeah, it's about time in the series where I finally go and upgrade my gear to the best possible ore. So I headed back into the nether in search of a spot to start strip mining. Of course, along the way, I was ambushed by a bunch of mobs, but I'm not here for you. I'm trying to go get my netherite. Once I found my destined spot, I just started going. Strip mining. Yeah, it's not really that fun anymore. Sure, my pickaxe destroys netherrack like butter, but who really wants to watch that? So we'll just skip to all the netherite I find. This did take me two entire hours to go through the nether and get 44 total pieces of ancient debris. But after all that time, it was definitely worth it. Because as I was able to return home, I smelted all of it into 11 netherite ingots. Right away, I could tell I'm not going to be using these netherite ingots on my gear. The reason for that is because these are already broken. So if I'm going to use it, I got to heal this stuff up. So instead, I figured I'd just make my sword and pickaxe netherite for now. Hour 27. We still have some leftover netherite, and I do want to put it on my gear, but I just wasn't really sure what pieces. So I made another diamond helmet and decided to enchant it to see if I could max out my current one. However, when combining them, I got rid of the protection 4. Fudge! I just took away the prop 4 part. Oh, son of a gun. Without prop 4, there's no way I'm going to be making this piece netherite. Without prop 4, there's no way I'm making this piece netherite. So I just turned my chestplate, legs, and boots into it. 
This kind of means I have to go take on the dragon. Yeah, I'm basically only halfway in and I want to go take on the dragon right now. So I went ahead and rounded up all the gear I'll be needing. Strength pots, fire res pots, a few stacks of quartz blocks because I'm not using this stuff anymore and I can just build in the end with it. There's no other use I have for quartz at the moment. I grabbed some extra pearls, lava buckets, and water, and then made the final Eyes of Ender. However, before I left, I wanted to make sure that I had one thing for the elytra when I do get it. Fireworks, which means grabbing sugarcane and gunpowder to make them. But with everything I need in my inventory, it was time to head in that direction. I threw the eye and left my island behind. Goodbye, my friend friendly island i'll see you later i booted through the ocean for a little while trying to just follow these eyes until it was right below me the stronghold so i dug down and landed in the eye of the beast now just to find the portal room once i made it i popped in all the eyes took a deep breath and jumped in now i always say the dragon fight should definitely be buffed but this one sucked i did my duty and went around breaking every single crystal so that the dragon has no chance of healing however after doing so the dragon just wouldn't land apparently i prepared strength potions for absolutely no reason because i was just gonna crit it out no, no 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 i had to use my bow the entire fight i mean thankfully i'm so good i never missed a shot <laughs> <clears throat> I said never miss a shot, but once the dragon was dead, I feel like I accomplished a big part of this 50 hour journey. However, I still have to go find myself an elytra and get back to work on the island. So I built my way up with the quartz to the end gateway and got to work. I found two end cities in the beginning. Both of them did not have ships, so I ignored the first one and then the second one. However, on the third try, I did make it to a ship. I ignored the city completely and just went for my prize. Once I got the elytra in my hand, I was so ready to take on the world. That's when all of my plans for the next few hours shot right out of my head. Ah! <gasps> Bending helmet! Oh, I forgot I could get mending on these things. Wait a minute. Oh, maybe I should stay here. I have the ability to get mending shovels, pickaxes, swords, and all armor types. And there's no way I can get it while sitting on the island, so I may as well spend the next few hours, and by few, I mean way more than a few, looting as many end cities as I possibly can. Hour 28 is where my journey begins in the end. I'm about to go on a very repetitive journey going through end city after end city to try and find mending gear. Thankfully, along the way, the easiest ones that I'm going to be able to get are sword, pickaxe, and shovel. Those ones were marked off the list almost instantly. Now I was really just on to armor. The helmet was a really easy find, followed by the boots. With two-fourths mending gear, I was definitely considering leaving the end, but I need every single piece. And it's then when when I was able to find mending leggings. I kind of wish I didn't just turn all of my gear into netherite because now I have to turn this gear into netherite to combine it. Yeah, I'm not smart. The issue with the hours of work I put into this was the chest plate. I could not find a chest plate anywhere. While using up all of my fireworks and actually breaking elytra after elytra, I could not find a chest plate. There were plenty of actual chest plates, I just needed mending on one. One singular chest plate, please, somewhere, anywhere. At this point, I've been to over 30 end cities and quitting was on my mind. I was almost out of fireworks. I had no idea what I was going to do next. That's until in hour 29, I found it. A mending chest plate. After filling up six shulker boxes worth of loot, I got what I needed. You could not hold me back. The minute I found an end gateway, I was out of there. I really wanted to go home at this point. Oh, that's right. I am back home. Oh my word. The only thing I'm not really looking forward to is organizing all of this stuff into chests. Honestly, the craziest part about this entire journey was how many elytras I tore through the durability of. And I have like an entire chest dedicated to these at this point. But once everything was sorted, I was able to make my OP helmet and restore the protection four I took away from it earlier. Which means after all of that, I made it into netherite and finally got the cover me in debris achievement. Then I switched all of the men armor that I had into netherite so I could put it with my current armor. However, after combining the chest plate and leggings, I ran into an issue where I did not have 38 levels to do the boots, which gave me an idea for hour 30. I prepared a shulker box full of lava, water, hoppers, iron bars, mine carts, white carpet, oak leaves, ladders, slabs, and a name tag that says subscribe, because you know, you should do that. If you know what I'm about to go and build right now, then you're a genius, because I was back to the end. I know I just got home, but give me a second. Once I was back, I laid down my lava and let it flow. Yep, that's right. I'm going to be building an enderman farm. Thankfully, I've done this numerous upon numerous of times, so I'm probably not going to mess it 
it up. Once I had the base of it done, the gigantic platform on the top was a little irritating, but it was fine. I spawned in my little Endermite buddy, named him, and we were done. The Enderman farm is working, and loads of them are spawning. It was great, if not a little lag inducing, but the speed at which I leveled up was crazy. I got to level 50 so quickly, and as soon as I got home, I was finally able to make my OP netherite boots with prop 4, dab strider, mending, soul speed unbreaking, and feather falling. I also went back to farm up another 36 levels so I could make an amazing diamond pickaxe ready for netherite, aka efficiency 5, unbreaking 3, mending, and silk touch. Definitely a very successful hour of my life. Alright, if you thought the last few hours were insane with adventuring, you're gonna love hour 31 because I went looking around the overworld this time. I wanted to fly around to see if I could grab anything from the real overworld that I would want on my island. Obviously, I'm not gonna build anything out in the far regions of the overworld, but I did want to grab some saplings or something. Obviously, I ignored the mushroom biomes because I have seen those before and sure, they're gonna be useful later, but they don't have anything on them I want right now. The first biome that I found was a giant acacia biome island, and so I collected some acacia wood and the saplings. I'm never gonna use it, but I can have it, I guess. The next place I found was a jungle biome where I grabbed jungle wood, saplings, and bamboo. Now, again, I don't think I'm gonna be using the jungle saplings for anything because the wood sucks, but bamboo's good. Then when I found a desert, I collected the cactus, of course, because it's another resource I do not have. Oh, and for some reason, I stopped by a mangrove biome and decided to grab the wood and saplings. I don't know why. This is the worst type of wood in all of my- the trees are terrible, and I really thought acacia trees were bad. When it was getting about time to return home, I ended up finding a spruce biome, which is perfect. That is exactly why I am out here, okay? There's no other tree I want in this world than spruce. So I farmed up plenty of saplings and decided to head home through the nether. Thankfully, it takes basically no time to get home. However, I did stop a couple of times because I saw some treasure bastions. These things I cannot ignore, all right? When I loot one of these chests and there's a netherite ingot inside, you know I had to stop, okay? It's just just. However, once I did finally find the portal after strip mining for like 25 minutes, I was back home with tons of of loot, including acacia, jungle, spruce, and mangrove saplings, a ton of gold blocks, which I don't really need, but I kind of got, and then three netherite ingots, which is insane. The overworld was a pretty good haul. Hour 32, now that we're back on the island, it's time to turn this into a real resort. So first things first is I expanded the beacon so that it could have haste too. The reason for this is I went down in the mines to grab as much cobblestone as I possibly could, which is really a lie when you say it like that because I could have grabbed way more, I just stopped when I had enough. With that cobblestone, I made a bunch of new furnaces and started smelting it all down into smooth stone. I also continued using lava buckets from the nether because there is no way I'm wasting so much coal on this. And while all of that's happening, I decided to build a mini beach. Now obviously we're on an island, so we we need a little area we can enjoy the sun and the water. So I added a nice beach in front of our house. Now I'm not really loving this house, but I decided to spruce up the area in case I do use it in the future. I stacked up a bunch of sand and sandstone in the ocean to expand it out, and then I made a really cool little umbrella out of the extra resources I had from the lighthouse. Obviously I have no wool, so it kind of looks weird, but with a couple beach chairs, I think it rounded out very nicely. And now that I'm expanding the island a little bit more with this sand, I kind of want to expand it in the backside with dirt. However, I don't really want to have to make my own dirt, so it's to the mushroom island I go. I told you this place would be useful. I'm just going to destroy it for a ton of dirt. Look, this is technically the easier option, and I'm not really going to the overworld and abandoning my island, okay? This is kind of an island, so it makes sense, right? Once I had all that I needed, I got back to the island and started expanding. I built a brand new cage where I'm going to be housing the chickens and also tore down the house. I've realized that I don't need a house here, and the chicken pen can just be a regular old pen. If I'm gonna use the land, I'm gonna make it into like a botanical garden or something and make my island that much better instead of just having this rugged old house here. At the start of hour 33, I found a murderer on my island. Did you kill your llamas? Why are you at the top of my lighthouse? What happened to the llamas, dude? What did you do to them? What did you do? Of course, I wasn't gonna let this guy get away with it. He just killed his own llamas, so I killed him. You know, it's just, I, I swear. After getting rid of my first wandering trader, I spent another hour fishing. Yeah, I know, I didn't forget about fishing, okay? I went back to it. We're 33 hours in and I needed a little bit of a break. Plus, come on, you can't get over this replay. It looks sick. 
The loot from my haul was obviously a bunch of fish that I'm not going to do anything with. Three enchanted fishing rods, three broken bows, and two enchanted books with basically nothing on them. Who wants blast protection and fire protection anyway? Hour 34, I started one of the most beautiful builds on the island. Okay, if you have seen some of my past one block videos, you know that I enjoy stone archways. So I started working on the expanse of the island and turned it into a giant stone arch. This took me the entire hour to do, but I'm showing you quickly in replays because just look how amazing the island is growing. Underneath the archway, of course, I was gonna put a waterfall, but instead I decided to just have a little boat and then I went moss hunting. I used that for the top and then glowberry specifically specifically for the bottom so I have like hanging vines that glow. Oh, and you gotta do one thing boring in the hour, so I finished out by farming all my wheat, carrot, potatoes, and sugar cane. But let's be honest, this area is the highlight of the hour. Hour 35 started off by me destroying the potato and carrot farm that I worked so hard to create earlier. The reason for this is I'm about to expand the island behind the lighthouse. Not only is this going to give me more land to work with, but the real reason I wanted to do this was because of a cactus farm. Remember when I grabbed it from the desert? Well, uh, I don't really have that many, so I decided to get more. I don't think I'm ever going to be needing green dye, but... Eh, who knows. So once I had the place expanded out, I started working on the collection system first. It's been about seven years since I've created a cactus farm because that was the last time I played factions. So I'm doing this completely by memory. I built each layer out of sand, cactus, and fences. The fences were so that when the cactus grows, it'll break. I don't know why it grows when there is something next to it, but I guess it works this way. Or at least at the time, I was praying it worked that way because I didn't have very many cactus and I couldn't really test it out. With multiple layers of the farm, complete, I now have to wait for all of this cactus to grow so I can fill it out. And to finish off the hour, I built paths to it and tidied up the area so it looks neat and nice. You guys know I can't have a messy island. Hour 36, shocker, I was back to making the island look amazing. I started by expanding the path to the cactus farm and then making an artificial island. I have no idea what I'm going to use it for, but it looks cool. I also made one of the sickest bridges ever with trapdoors and campfires. It's really the simple things in life, isn't it? Then of course I took a break to go and mine a ton more cobblestone. The reason for this is because in about 10 seconds, I'm going to be making some gigantic rocks. Speaking of that, once I did have the smooth stone, I built up next to the cactus farm to have a little bit of an outline. As I said, I'm going to be making gigantic stones. Well, what I really thought I wanted was a mountain, but when you kind of think about having a mountain on your island, you realize how much work that is, so instead you make mini mountains. I used stone to build it all up, and then once I had a design, I used cobblestone mixed in to make it actually look natural. And of course, you can't forget about decorating. I went back to moss to give it an overgrown look. Plus, the pink azalea bushes are top tier Minecraft, okay? These are the best texture in all of the game. With the paths to the cactus farm and art official island completely decorated, I now just have to figure out what goes there. Hour 37, I came up with what I wanted to put on the mini artificial island. The more and more I work in this world, the more chests I need. So I'm gonna make this into a chest room. It's gonna be kind of small, of course, but we still have the main one in the lighthouse. This is just gonna be for extra stuff. So I started by building up a cobblestone and stone brick wall. I kind of want to give it a mini castle vibe, and I've kind of done this build one other time. You guys probably haven't seen the video, but it was like a 1.18 modded terrain video with winter we did over a year ago. And I was trying to remember the design and I honestly think it looks all right. Once I had this stone all placed down, I used wood as the roof and now it's really looking medieval. However, there's always one thing I add to my builds and that's a little bit of a tower. I started by using spruce wood as the base. Yes, I actually have spruce wood now. Then once that was placed down and stripped, I moved into oak. It's not going to be a huge tower, just big enough to see. And just to give the build a little bit more depth, the roof was completely made out of moss. I don't know why I decided to make the tower of this moss, except for the fact that I can put these little bushes on top. To be honest, the finished build kind of looks crazy, especially when you say this is a chest room because of how small it is, but I'm still considering this a good job well done. All right, I've been building for quite some time, and now that we're on hour 38, I had to do some chores. First up was collecting the cactus farm. This thing actually does work, which means I was able to expand it a little bit. And now that I have a new chest room, I have to add all of the extra stuff that I mentioned earlier into it. Like basically all of the diamond armor that I had gotten from our end city adventure. I started moving all of that stuff into this shed because there's no real need for it in the house, and it's not like a building material, so it's kind of just wasting away 
in the chest area at the lighthouse. And once I had armor, saddles, enchanted bows, fishing rod, and all of the plants and food into this new area, I had to reorganize all of the barrels in the lighthouse. Since I kind of was running out of room, and now that I have room, I had to go back through and reorganize all of the chests and barrels so that everything was in its rightful place. Wood, stone, all had its own chest from now on. The nether section was finally organized. It felt a lot better being here. However, yeah, I agree with you. Boring hour. Now, hour 39 is a very special hour because you're not going to believe what I chose to do. Instead of doing some more crazy builds on the island or going adventuring, maybe trying to kill a mob, uh... I went to the end and farmed Endermen for an entire hour. I'm not kidding. I literally did nothing else in the entire hour except want to get to level 100. Which, to be fair, actually did take me an hour to do. And now that I have it, I went home. Living out in the ocean, there is one boss that actually scares me, an Elder Guardian. However, now that I have amazing gear, I want to go take them on. Plus, one of the builds I have planned requires sponges. Or if I actually did the build, it would have, but uh, that's a story for another time. I geared up by making water breathing potions, and to be honest, I didn't even know how I knew how to do that, because uh, I'm not looking at the footage, and I still don't know how to make water breathing potions right now. But I guess I did, so I flew out to find an ocean monument. Here, I'm basically looking for sponges, but of course, since you get mining fatigue right away, I had to go and kill not one, not two, but all three Elder Guardians. However, while I was swimming around these 10 to 15 rooms, I could not find the sponges. I don't actually know if ocean monuments all spawn with a sponge room, so I decided to leave and go find another one, where I killed another not one, not two, but three Elder Guardians. And finally, once I found the sponge room, I mined it all. No matter if I had mining fatigue or not, I didn't care. I wanted the sponges. And of course, I had to dry out the sponges, so I went to the nether really quickly and just burned all of the water. I don't really know how that works, but it does. Then I just refarmed the tree farm and made some more golden carrots. I'll use the sponges for something later. Okay, so our 41 and 42 are kind of a mess. First, I started by flying out over the ocean so that I could find sand. I'm gonna be needing a bunch of it for the glass I have planned for my next build. And since you know, there's no sand on my island other than like four. Once I had all the sand that I needed, I returned home and started repurposing the barn that I made. I tore down the inside layers because why the heck does it need two floors and made a gigantic furnace. Okay, it's not really a furnace, but I'm just gonna call it one because auto smelter sounds weird. Once I had the giant thing set up, I put in all of the sand and then went to the nether to grab like 40 buckets of lava. I probably won't need this much, but in hindsight, it's good to have. And while that was going, I had a plan to go fly around the ocean to look for a warm ocean. Yep, that's right. I need coral and a lot of it. Unfortunately, the rest of the hour was just flying around because I never found the warm ocean, which is why hour 42 was just as much of a mess as 41 because my only goal was to find the warm ocean. Remember how I don't have mending or I'm breaking for my elytra? Yeah, so I had to grab three more new ones, refuel all my fireworks and just start flying off again. Again. I wish there was an easier way to find this stuff, but once I did, I just started mining loads of different types of coral. Blue, pink, yellow, red, it did not matter. I grabbed all the fans, everything that I could get. Thankfully, I had Silk Touch, and then when I collected all of it, still colorful, I flew back home. And yes, that took me two hours to find. Hour 43 started by me filling my inventory with the glass that had auto smelted. Yes, I said auto smelter there, but giant furnace doesn't work in that sentence. I flew up kind of above the tree farm and kind of above the barn and started building a gigantic dirt circle. Clearly, I'm not going to tell you what this is, but if you figure it out beforehand, uh, good job. Comment it down below. Once I had a 3D shape going with all of the dirt, I started placing in the glass. I've never made a floating sphere out of blocks that you can't really see, so I had I had no idea if, I, if this was a success or not. But once it was done, I filled the floor of the sphere with sand. And then I placed one water bucket and it didn't do anything. It's not filling this thing up. If you can't tell by now, yes, this is gonna be like a floating ocean in the sky. So to fix the problem, I filled my entire inventory with water buckets and just began filling the entire place over and over and over again. However, once it did have all the water it needed, I started placing the coral and coral fans. I don't really know how coral is supposed to be placed, but I just 
sculpted it so it would look good. Once I had all of the coral in place as well as seagrass, I wanted to figure out what should go inside of this thing. So I flew to the ocean, a warm ocean, and started collecting a bunch of tropical fish with all those buckets I still had. I grabbed every single type of fish that I could find, different colors, different shades, different shapes, it did not matter. I just wanted a ton for this weird sphere thing I've made. Back home, I placed them all inside, and now I have some random fish swimming above my base. Don't ask me why I did this. I come up with the craziest ideas. Now, hours 44, 45, and 46 are basically all combined. You know how normal people want to go mining for gear? Well, I want to go flying for gear. That sounds utterly crazy when I say it out loud. Okay, so all of my elytras have been breaking, and I kind of need more. Of course, I can farm phantoms all day long. I don't really care about that. However, I just want more in general, and I also want a lot more ores. So instead of mining, I went and city hunting again for three hours straight. This time when I was in the end, I had a ton of fireworks. So there was absolutely no way I'm gonna fall out of the sky and not be able to get back to base. I flew over on the end going city to city to city, grabbing stuff from the boats, like all of the elytras, grabbing stuff from the chest that, you know, had any enchant on it at all, grabbing all of the gold, the iron, the diamonds, the emeralds, even shulker boxes, it did not matter. Thankfully, I'm an organized child, so I had four shulker boxes full of armor, elytras, tools, and ores. Clearly, I'm not gonna show you me going to, like, 50 plus end cities, but let's just say I got some crazy loot. And when I got back to base, I started sorting it all out. I quickly realized that I can create an OP sword. So I made one of the diamond ones to netherite, having a looting three, sharpness four, and mending sword. Then I combined that with my current one, making it Looting 3, Fire Aspect 2, Sharpness 5, Unbreaking 3, and Mending. Oh, I also filled almost an entire chest of elytras in the new chest room that I made. Yeah, I'm, I'm like rich. I'm borderline Jeff, B I'm Elon Musk. That's what I am now. Hour 47, I'm realizing that even though I am Elon Musk, I am not immortal. So I need Totems of Undying. After completing a few chores in the end, killing off an entire species, I went flying to look for a pillager tower. Once I got there, I farmed the raid captain so that I could get a higher level of bad omen. I want to be getting a lot of totems so I don't really have to come back. When I got to the village, the raid started, okay? Clearing wave 1 was super easy, except for this little guy hiding down in a ravine. Wave 2, ravagers began spawning but I have an OP bow. Like, come on, you're not gonna stop me. Round three was also easy. I definitely didn't at one point get mauled by a Ravenger and Pillager combo to where I was down to three hearts. Ignore that. And wave four was obviously so much easier. Never got down to two hearts ever and dived into that river. I'm, I hope he's not showing you that part. However, I did end up running out of gapples on this round, so I was a little scared. Thankfully, I did finish off wave four as night fell and I got the victory. I cleared the raid. Hero of the village achievement unlocked. And obviously I don't have any villagers, so it's useless to me. But I did get six totems and 27 emeralds. So now I'm like Elon Musk, but with six lives. On my way back home in hour 48, I stumbled onto something I had forgotten about. The deep dark. I completely forgot that the warden was a thing, and since I've defeated everything else in the game, now I'm thinking about fighting a warden. But not right now, so I returned to base and prominently made 42 more golden apples. With these, I'm gonna go right back and find that warden. So of course, with absolutely zero fear, I found the ancient city. I started looting the place in search of a god apple, but unfortunately, I had zero luck in finding one. I don't really need any of the chest loot here, so I went over to a little cave and started mining my tunnel. The reason for this is because the warden is super scary, and if you don't have a way to escape him, you're basically gonna die. He has way too many hit points to actually take on, even with a full inventory of totems, unless you have an escape route. Once I had it completely built, I lined my inventory with everything that I'm gonna be needing for this fight, ran over, and started scaring myself internally to spawn him in. When the warden spawned in, he didn't instantly find me, so I shot my bow and the fight began. I am utterly terrified of this mob, not only because it's, it's just scary looking, 
but this is gonna end my world in, in 0.4 seconds. I hit it a few times on my way back to the tunnel, but that really didn't matter because he has so many hearts and he hit me down to three instantly. While sitting in the tunnel, I realized the issue with this method is the moment I run back, he is going to destroy my health with one of those blasts because they hit no matter what. But I tanked it with a gapple and ran past him. Hopefully he's chasing me. Oh my God, he's chasing me. I'm so scared. The rest of the fight was basically me running from this man at like no HP at all. I tried using different areas of the world to evade him so I could bow him down and that just did not work whatsoever. Eventually I popped my first totem. I had to hold out one of my other ones and on the escape I ended up popping another. I don't have very many chances left to kill this guy so I went back in with strength and regen and it was such a bad idea. I instantly got blasted and couldn't really hit the guy. I was terrified. I ran back into my little tunnel and dude why did they make this guy so powerful? I can't I cannot fight this man. I'm, I'm so scared. At one point I finally manned up and just started 1v1ing the warden. I, I don't know why I did this. I'm still scared. I'm shaking in my boots here man. Let's just say it did not work and he made me retreat all the way back to my hole. The issue is I only have one totem left. I have no more potions and I only have 23 golden apples left, which basically means I have one more push to kill this guy before I'm dead myself. Oh my word. I actually killed him. I actually killed the warden and I still have a totem left over. Yes, I'm still immortal, Elon. With that victory, I headed home, dude. I, I'm still shaking. I only have one totem left after all of that. Hour 49, I'm still shaking after that victory, but when I was back on the island, I wanted a nice relaxing hour. So I made a tree farm. To do that, I went and mined a tunnel through the little mountains that I made earlier. I was basically expanding the island once more with some stone and no, this is no normal tree farm, okay? This is going to be my spruce tree farm. So once again, I decorated the platform with moss, stairs, flowers, bone meal, it didn't really matter. I just wanted the area to look pretty and once it was done, I filled the middle portions with dirt and planted the trees. The rest of the hour I spent farming spruce. Yep, it only took me till the end of the video to finally spiral up my favorite tree in hardcore Minecraft. This is a satisfying ending. Speaking of ending, hour 50. I have almost survived 50 hours on this island, so why not finish it off with our favorite task, fishing. Okay, don't leave the video, I swear. I, I do fish, but I build a boat to fish on this time. I guess technically I could have built this boat to leave the island after surviving on it for 50 hours, but no, I'm building one so that I can have a proper fishing boat. I used mangrove wood to make this, okay? So I'm growing as a human being. I made this amazing looking boat, which it is, it looks amazing. You see this end product? I'm on an amazing looking boat and I made it out of mangrove wood. This is a proper send off to surviving 50 hours on a flippin' island, okay? Once I had the ship decorated up with a bunch of different materials like barrels, the wither skeleton skull, a makeshift bed on a carpet, I went fishing off the edge of it. The rest of my time on this island, I sat here and fished so relaxily. That's not a word. It doesn't matter though because as the sun set, my hour set as well. I didn't get any amazing loot from the ocean. That was not the goal. The goal was to end out my time doing something amazing. If you guys enjoyed the entire process of building this amazing island and getting all the gear that I got throughout this 50 hour journey, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. 30,000 likes and 2,000 comments, I will return to this island and film a full 100 hours on it. I have no idea what amazing stuff I can build in a full 100 hour video, but please don't make me do that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.